major league clubhouse staff, uh, players. What's amazing is that if you're there for a while, let's say you're at the same team for a decade, I mean, you will spend over a year of your life, two years, three years of your life, depending on how long you're with that team, in that team spring training city. It's kind of amazing because yeah. you're there for yeah. a month at a time. If, if you are with a team long enough, you will spend a significant amount of time of your life in that team spring training facility. And I don't say that as a knock on Arizona. No, not at all. Peoria. I, just I enjoy it out here. It's a, it's beautiful. You got the mountains. You got the red rocks. Uh, it's great out here. But it is amazing because you're spending really a significant amount of time in a place that uh, is not maybe your home. So uh, it's interesting in that sense. But all good. Spring training continues. And everybody having a, a grand old time a grand old time indeed well the padres did just tie it up with the royals in the bottom of the seventh inning oh my goodness what a ball game two <laughs> two to two <laughs> did not expect for sammy left to go in that direction but you're right because i was looking adam and i were talking before the show adam's here on the board and we were talking about how you Darvish was making his first start of the uh, spring training this year, and he needs to have a good one, and he needs to do well, things on, right. Hold on. And it's pretty much like he if he doesn't have a good one, he might as well just call it quits right now. No, Wait, I'm kidding. Who Sam. said this? I'm kidding, oh, okay. Sam. This was a I'm joke. kidding. I, when but I we, heard we need wanted, to have a good one, I said, What? We wanted to see him pitch well, and he did, but then I looked at the Royals lineup, and the Royals lineup has not many, if any, major leaguers in it. I don't see the uh, Bobby Witt Jr. in there. I don't no. see well, they're, any of they're, those guys. Here's why. They're, they're split squad today, so mm. um, most of their major league position players will play at home in surprise. What's interesting, and I could not get an answer about this before the game, and I asked some Royals people, I don't know quite why Michael Waka wasn't pitching at home in surprise for split squad and he went on the road i, I don't know why maybe <laughs> that is a good face, question well i know there could be a lot of reasons maybe you wanted to face a, a better lineup it, there could be a lot of reasons so um yeah that was interesting because they're split squad today so you you would think that a starting pitcher kind of a bona fide starting pitcher in waka would actually pitch at home but it ended up being a really good cactus league pitching matchup between darvish <laughs> and duel. waka but yeah, but to your point, uh, I saw a little bit of Darvish uh, on the webcast with uh, Jesse and Tony, and apparently he threw the ball well and went two scoreless innings. And apparently Jackson Merrill has made a couple of plays in center field today. So there were some headlines already from that game in Peoria between the Padres and the Royals. Well, let's start with those. Let's start with the headlines during the game. So you, Darvish, this year. I mean, where do you expect him to be in the rotation? What number in the rotation? Because right now, I guess it would be uh, Joe is supposed to be the first guy out, and then you maybe got you. But what do you think? Uh, it's one or two. I mean, take your pick. It's certainly top two. Well, that's um, what I'm saying. Because not that it really matters. I, I mean, think it, it does it, matter, though. Why does it matter, man? It's great. <laughs> Sam's got a little bit of a he's got a little everybody bit of a fire the to same, him. Every, everybody pitches the, the same amount of starts. I think because healthy. of the extension that they signed him to that they were expecting him to be a number one guy for at least a couple more okay. years, three I or mean, four more years. The, these are just arbitrary titles. I mean, you, whether he's one or two, it doesn't really matter. But I, I guess I understand what you're saying. Is he Not channeling to on Tony Gwynn Jr. and Chris Ello right do now? You, wait, hold on. Do you think I'm in a mood today? You definitely already? are in some sort of a mood. You've well, got a little I, bit I, of a tood. <laughs> you know what's funny? Here, I'm going to tell you what's funny. Yesterday, I was on the morning show, right? And Scraby, you know me, and I think our listeners at this point know me. I'm on enough. I'm a pretty upbeat, happy guy. Absolutely. I think I present that way. I will tell you what, I went on Ben and Woods yesterday morning, and I had somebody, I won't reveal who that somebody was, tell me, and it was not you, it was not Adam Kluke, it wasn't anybody who works for 97.3 <laughs> The Fan, I'll say that. I had somebody tell me, they were watching the YouTube stream, and they were like, yeah, you you, you look like you you were kind of hitting the wall. You look like you, you weren't too happy. <laughs> and it was interesting because it wasn't that I wasn't happy, but I certainly was as tired and sort of um, out of it as I've been at spring training, like I said earlier. So I don't know if some of that is carried into today. Maybe I'm just a little bit 
you know, a little bit I don't bit, think you uh, look tired or anything. Like, I, I think it's kind of rude that someone would just be like, hey, bro, you're looking tired. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> kind of a strange thing for someone to say. Well, but... I, apo- I apologize for being feisty, too, but let's get back to the No, get, keep, I... keep being feisty, Sam. Okay. We need it. I don't think it it matters at the end at the end of the day whether it's uh, whether he's technically your opening day starter or not. I will say this, based on the fact that Joe's pitching before him right now, I would say that is potentially an indicator that if the Padres plan to use those two guys for the two games in Korea, which what I, I would assume they do, that it would be Musgrove one, Darvish two, as far as those two games in Korea. Does that mean that it's going to necessarily be Musgrove on opening day at Petco Park? It, it doesn't. Um, but if you were telling me, if you were asking me, Scraby, right now, I would say Joe Musgrove is is probably your starting pitcher at Petco Park on on uh, on uh, March 28th. Now, you know, you never know because it's about what days they're on and, you know, how it all kind of shakes out. And there is this complication of going to Korea, but let's just focus on the Korea games right now. Look, it, it is lining up. You would assume to be Musgrove and then Darvish, but one versus two, it's just, it, it doesn't actually matter, right? And the the so, reason uh, that I, I think it matters to me at least is because, okay. it, and it's not really anything with who's better. It's not like that, but last year, you Darvish didn't, have really the greatest start to the season it was kind of funky because he went to the world baseball classic and then he kind of missed some starts here he had a little bit of a late start and it felt like he was trying to catch up all year and he never caught up so i'm hoping and through what i've learned over the years working on this show is that routine is everything and so i'm hoping that you darvish can start the year in a good rhythm and then just try to build on that throughout the year instead of trying to catch up all season I agree with you, but what what does that have to do with whether he's quote unquote your number one or your number two? Well, you know what, Sam, it really doesn't. <laughs> it really <laughs> doesn't. But I was uh, thinking that maybe you were going to say he was going to be three you, or four. Or you really like wanted that. me to go along with this. I, I was really and hoping and I shut it down. You shut. It's okay to shut it down because you know I say a lot of crazy things and I need that to happen. But it's uh, it, it's going to be one of the biggest questions, Sam. One. Or two, Musgrove okay. and Darvish. So I need you to go out there. Well, here and somebody, somebody in the chat made a good point, and they're absolutely right. Uh, wait, hold on, let me find what was the comment. Oh, I see. Uh, it, yeah. Oh, here uh, we have. I don't know how to say the name of the comment. I don't either. One or two. <laughs> we need them both healthy and productive. And there's no doubt when it comes to Musgrove and Darvish, the health part of it is just absolutely. Um, incredibly important because they're both coming off injuries that ended their seasons. They are incredibly important to this rotation because of the question marks in it in the back end. And and look, Michael King, I think to this point has been incredibly impressive as a guy, his stuff, everything we've heard about him uh, had a great interview this morning on Ben and Woods and he's been super impressive. Um, But look, and I think Michael would, would admit this as well until Michael King you know, puts together that full season. And, and hey, to his credit, he's put out a number 180 innings, which is a lot of innings. It's doable if you stay healthy and you're effective, but it's a lot of innings. That's a tall yeah. order. And I yes. commend Michael for putting that number out there. Look, the reality is for as, you know, good as he may be and for as, you know, as much of an impression as he's made so far on me, Ben and Woods, Padres fans in general, if you've heard him talk so far, and we know this stuff is really good. The reality is, is that he needs to answer that question still as to can he be a starting pitcher for an entire year? I mean, that's that's kind of the task at hand for him. It's the first opportunity. And by the way, it's no fault of his own. He's never been given the opportunity. He is being given the opportunity this year to go do that. And every Padre fan hopes he does it, you know, ex- exceptionally well. Um, but. Look, he's, he's got to answer that this season. He has an opportunity to for the first time. So um, you hope he does. But look, you have King and then you have, you know, not question marks at the back end, but we don't know who makes up the final two spots, at least in the early part of the season right now. So I say all that to say that is why Musgrove and Darvish are so important because yeah. they need to serve. This team desperately needs them to serve as the anchors, as two guys 
veterans they can count on every five days to give them a quality start and fingers crossed stay healthy. That is why they are so important. So one or two doesn't matter. Health and effectiveness absolutely does. I can't wait to tell Tony and Chris or ask Tony and Chris that same question and see how they react to it. I, I this is going to uh, be a little Chris, social I would, experiment. I Chris would imagine gonna tell Chris, me, uh, he's going to be like, oh, that doesn't really even matter. I, I feel like Chris will entertain it more with you. I think Tony may shut it down quicker. <laughs> well, I have an update. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Maybe Tony will say, you know what? Inside a clubhouse, it does matter who gets that opening day start. And it may. It may. You know, I, I don't know. I haven't asked either of them about it. I would assume knowing Joe and you, I, it doesn't I think matter both of them, them would probably say would love it, but doesn't really matter. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I but, do, uh, I do, Sam, have an update on the game heading or right now okay, against the please. Royals, the Padres and the Royals. They scored four runs or five runs, I'm sorry, in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Padres did. They're up six to two now over the Royals in the top of the eighth. Oscar Mercado homered for the second time today. Oh, a today. second time? Wow. Yes, two run shot. And uh, they good just had him. a pretty hey. good inning there. So, hey, I got, I got to tell you. Um, you know, there's been a lot of focus on Jackson Merrill, rightfully so, and he's playing center field today, so that is very interesting. That is but very interesting, Cal Mitchell, yes. Cal Mitchell, a home run yesterday. Oscar Mercado, two home runs today. So, you know, those uh, you know those players they brought in that do have major league experience in Mitchell and Mercado, last couple of days, they've done some nice things, and obviously Mitchell has uh, local ties, Rancho Bernardo, high grad. So, interesting. Look, there are opportunities abound and if somebody like a mitchell or a mercado really impresses during spring training i i think there's a very real chance somebody like that could make this team so interesting mercado two home runs today yeah love to see it uh all right when we get back here on going to chris as i said i'm scraby i'm filling in for the guys and sam levitt is filling in for them as well they'll be back later in the show but we are going to talk about jackson merrill in center field we may also hear from michael king he was on with the morning show and then matt snyder of cbs sports is going to join us at 2 40 i'm going to do my best not to ask him a uniform question because i feel like the uniforms have taken taking their 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 spot their 15 minutes of fame a little bit too far at this point so maybe i won't has anybody him. ever uh has anybody ever blocked you on twitter scraby um yes actually yeah why has someone blocked you oh you didn't hear that this morning with profar and ben and woods uh no but we're, i'm gonna figure this oh, out the adam is so disappointed i saw uh, it in his eyes he's so disappointed. <laughs> okay i got it <laughs> maybe we'll revisit that okay we'll <laughs> revisit that but when we get back we'll talk uh briefly about jackson merrill and center field and then i'm gonna try to figure out what's going on with this jerks and profile block thing go twitter i'm assuming anyway that's up next on 97.3 the fan did you miss anything from your favorite fan talk show the odyssey amps chaptering feature allows you to skip any segment you want okay.
back here. Sorry. Back here in the Odyssey Palace, 97.3 The Fan. Sammy, Scraby, filling in for Gwen and Chris until they are ready to go. Tony is probably going to be in a great mood after this five-run bottom of the seventh for the Padres against the Royals in Peoria. But I just spent the entire break trying to, or well, not trying to, finding out and listening to the story behind Jerks and Profar and Ben and Woods. And I have, so Sam posed the question before the break, have you ever been blocked by someone on Twitter? And the answer is yes, but I don't really know how many, but you know, I'm sure there are people out there. But well, there's been a there's been a lot of viral content from uh, from the station the last 24 hours because there's been this jerks and profile clip that I think we're about to play. Yeah, and then also Sam Levitt Jr. I mean, yeah, what in the just world? Quality is happening? content from Peoria. I mean, that's on top of all the usual. So Scraby, start making some some quality I, viral content. Get on it. I, Do I something need crazy. To. I need to because you know what? There was just uh, we don't got anything going on in the afternoons with the viral content. <laughs> I need to get Chris to like maybe. Get an Android or something. That, that Wait, before help before out. before we play this clip, did did you, uh, Tony and Chris, revisit my figure skating line from Friday? <laughs> because did. one could ar- one could argue that I'm I'm providing viral content for your show. That is true. That is true. You have provided in several instances when you said wherever <laughs> Sammy goes, the champagne flows. Was born on this show. Also, that viral content. Yes, we did talk about it, and my first reaction was, it doesn't surprise me. Oh, Ty 10 went viral, didn't it? Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. Fair. I've totally forgot about that. And it was like two weeks ago. Anyway, so uh, Jerks and Profar was with Ben and Woods. And apparently he had blocked them on Twitter like months ago. And so they confronted him about it. And that's awesome. And here's what Jerks and Profar had to say about it. The elephant uh, in the room. I got to got to ask because we are big fans. Now I don't know how much time you spend on social media, uh, Twitter X, they call it now, but we were noticing that you you blocked all of us. On Twitter. We can't see your tweets. Did we do something? Are we? Do you remember this? Can I, we be on remember, man. Just, Do you have someone running that account for you? If you say negativity, like, you block. We didn't. We Bennett didn't. Woods. We didn't say anything about Negati- you, man. Hey, negative and negativity. No, we're very positive people. On. We're very positive right. people. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> In the spirit of, of making peace, we brought you yeah. your very own shirt. Yeah. Oh, shirt. Nice. So if you would be nice. so kind to unblock us, we would be very grateful. <laughs> and we will never, we will never <laughs> be negative again, ever. I promise. Okay? And we don't need negativity. Never, never. I like the attitude. The I mean, we only no, need positive positivity positive so, so we can win. Fans need to understand. Okay, positive only. Hey. Padre fan, positivity. Positivity. Yes. And you guys feed off We of need them. you guys. I love that. And, and Jerks and Profar is absolutely 100% correct. This is why I don't like to crush people on social media when they have a bad game because, fa- you know, players are just like us. They have feelings and they get paid a ton of money, yes, but they also play better when people, you know, are cheering for them instead of Now, I do, I do believe. And, and by the way, I think Ben and Woods are, are positive. Uh, yes, I, I agree. And I agree. for the most part on social media. But I do believe there could have been an instance <laughs> where there was some negativity coming out of a Twitter account or two belonging to Ben and Woods. So, but, what, but what would they ever say about Jerks and Profar? Because I, I, I don't, don't see it may, him. It may not have been about Profar. It may have been about Ooh, the Padres in general. Who knows? I get it. But hey. Okay. Jerickson's not going to have it. He hey, doesn't want to see it. Fans, so. they're seeing your stuff out there to the point oh. where Jerickson is, yeah, let, is let me, blocking it. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes people think because these guys are A, exceptionally talented, B, in a lot of cases, make a lot of money, um, that they don't, they don't like operate like we operate. And in some cases, that may be a little true because – um, they have a skill set that I think most of us don't have, but in a lot of ways, they're just people like yes. you and me and everybody listening, right? So they go on their phone <laughs> and they look at social media and they look at what people post and they get tagged and things. And yeah, if you, here's what I would say. If you tweet something much like us on the radio, okay, 
if we say something, there's always a possibility that who you are talking about will hear what you say. Yes. That is something that is very, very real. Mm -hmm. You should, you should treat social media the same. If you tweet something, you put something out, there's always a possibility that who you're talking about will see what you said. Yeah. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a reality. So, but I'm happy Jerickson and Ben and Woods well, worked it out. He and, didn't necessarily uh, unblock them. So we, we, we well, need to I, I don't check. know. Did they post, did they post it? Do we know did? Adam if they've checked? I don't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. So I'm going well, to, well, Jerickson would gonna have, have to, to go out. back to his phone and then actually like remember to do it. So I would feel like Paul needed to type in busy. Ben and Woods on his ex account. Cause I don't know that he's going to just go right to it. All right. Well, the, the, uh, the effort is what counts. And it they does, got him a shirt and Jer you know, Jerickson, I'm curious to see if he'll, he'll wear that shirt around. I think he will. I see, and stuff. I Maybe see them wearing it all the time. Uh, if that right. happens, if a Padre player is wearing a, wearing a Ben and Wood shirt for BP, I mean, well, they already had a manager the wearing a Ben and Wood shirt in, in Miami, so <laughs> they should right. just Not add even to the, the Padres repertoire. manager. <laughs> yes, now they have a Padres guy. Um, all right, you mentioned it before the break, but Jackson Merrill is taking the Padres by storm. We knew this was going to happen, and I know that maybe I'm a little bit too early on my love for him because I think that he's gonna, he's going to be great for this team. Maybe not necessarily right out of the gate, but his attitude, just what we've seen already in spring training, and he's in center field today. So I was talking about this last night, and Azokar being really the only guy who's going to play in everyday center field, but with him Jackson Merrill playing center field it seems to me like Jackson Merrill is just going to play wherever they need him to uh that that's in my mind but do you think that they're going to commit him to a position because I do think that's important to give a younger guy a committed position that he can he could work on it's a great question um Look, I think with each passing day, it's becoming more and more likely that Jackson Merrill is going to make this team out of spring training. Now, obviously, a lot can happen between now and going to Korea and then opening day at Petco Park, including the Padres making some moves. And, you know, it it almost gets lost in the shuffle because spring training is underway. And now we're talking about a lot of stuff. We're talking about all these young players. We're talking about what this roster may look like. But I th I still think a lot of us here would be surprised if there's not a move made uh, to bring mm. somebody in. And there may be, there may not be. But getting back to, to Jackson Merrill, that's a great question, Scraby, as to let, let's live in a world and assume that Jackson is on this team as an outfielder. That's a great question that I think, I don't know if it's it's the right time yet to ask it until we get a little bit closer to spring training being done. Yeah. But do the Padres envision him only playing left or only playing center? Or would they be open to a scenario where he played left and center? Not at the same time, but day to day. <laughs> I was, <would> hope not. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't, wasn't necessarily at one. I don't know the answer to that question. It would seem to me it could be easier for the Padres to to say, hey, you're going to be in left or you're going to be in center. And because you have very limited outfield experience, and let's be honest, you're really young and very limited uh, experience beyond double A to begin with, uh, or at double A, really, we want to make it as easy as possible and stick at one. I don't know how they feel about that because at the same time, this is an organization that right now, appears very willing to have Jackson Merrill on this roster and at 20 years old with limited double A experience appears ready to, to make him a big leaguer. Okay. So they may have trust in him to the point where they say, you know what, you may play left, you may play center. Okay. Whatever we need on that day, however we want to put together our lineup, that's what, you know, you're going to do a little bit of both. It's possible. Um, and certainly they are, in spring training here, they are doing their due diligence. I mean, we, we heard about it at this point a few days to a week ago from Mike Schilt when he was asked about the possibility of Jackson playing center field, and he didn't shut it down at all, right? Yeah. Um, so we knew this was coming at some point. So we'll see. But I think a lot of things are on the table right now. You know, if you would have asked – you know, ask me during the winter, you know, is it possible that Jackson Merrill makes this team out of spring training as an outfielder? I probably say I don't think that's going to happen 
because A, he's so young, the limited experience, and the fact that he's not an outfielder right now, and the idea that I think a lot of us thought there would be some other names brought in here. To this point, it hasn't happened. So you're now in a scenario where, you know, you are moving Jackson Merrill along, I think, maybe a little bit faster than you would have had um, there been a move or two made in the outfield at this point. And I'm not saying that's like a bad thing to move him along. If they feel like he's ready, look, it could end up being a genius move on the part of the San Diego Padres to say, we, we don't care about the limited experience. We don't care about 20 years old. He's ready. And when you're ready, you're ready. They've done it before. Okay, Fernando Tatis Jr., a little bit of a different situation and more experience, but another guy who came to spring training, they decided he was ready, and they never looked back. It does happen, and it could happen successfully, and you certainly hope it does if if that, if that that's what, what ends up happening. So I know that's like kind of long-winded to your point of center no, field or left field. It's okay. It's okay. But, um, you know, look, I, I think if there's one thing that's been very clear the last – couple of weeks it's that they are very serious about Jackson Merrill making this team and potentially about other young position players who do not have major league experience making this team I think everything right now is on the table and it has to be because look at the roster I mean and I'm not saying that in a in even a negative way right now that that's you know unless you're gonna we talked about Mercado and Mitchell and Bryce Johnson's another guy who um, who you could consider. But right now, those are the guys who are getting the reps during spring training. There aren't a ton of other names you're looking at because these are the guys that are that are in the mix right now. So, um, yeah, it's a fascinating question, Scraby. I think it's a really good question. Thank of, you. Do they, do they, would they rather have Jackson commit to one spot or would they be open to him if he can do both, left and center, Playing a little bit of both. I think it's an excellent question, Scraby, and I haven't heard anybody ask it. So wow. that's uh, on my to-do list. Okay. All right. Thank you for boosting my confidence. The Padres uh, won the game. Uh, I, I'm just going to call this person. already? Yeah, I'm just going to call this person. Inning? Yes, it was. I'm just going to call this person Boogie. But Boogie said the Hold Padres W. We are back. But Boogie also said bullpen imploding. Literally the comment before that. How so we were, we're in full imploding? fandom right now. Oh, because they gave up a run in the ninth inning? Let's see. Who was pitching? Um, I don't think it was anybody. Let's see. Padres let's see. going down to the bottom. Tommy Nance. Oh, yes. Tommy was Nance. Was pitching. Um, <laughs> Tom, poor Tommy Nance. <laughs> We're talking about Tommy Nance for in the wrong reasons here. Tom Cosgrove picked up the win. Scoreless inning for Adrian Morahone. Alec Jacob, a scoreless inning. You Darvish, two scoreless. Robert Suarez gave up a run on a hit, walk, and a strikeout. So uh, Padres got a six three win. Ooh. Tell you this: when when was first pitch in this game? First pitch was at twelve ten one eleven or one ten. So one, it was a one ten start. So this game was over in like two twenty. Sam's mad that he missed out on the quick, quick game. <laughs> He's a, no, just I, don't, I don't care about. All that. right, we got to go to break uh, because Matt Snyder's now on Tony, the other Tony, side. Tony, Tony's got to get on. He's got no excuse. Now. He's got no excuse. So we'll get Tony on at some point. Chris will be on at some point. We're talking to Matt Snyder, CBS <laughs> Sports, next on 97.3 The Fan.
Back here, Gwen and Chris, Sammy Levitt, Matt Scraby, Sammy in the camera, loving the music. Matt Snyder is on the phone. We'll get to him in just one second. Chris and Tony will be back here later in the show. But you know what? I think we we, we don't need to waste any time. We need to bring on our guy. CBS Sports, Matt Snyder, is joining us here on Gwen and Chris. Matt, how is your spring training going so far? Uh, very good. Um, I'm, I'm actually not traveling this year, so yeah. less fun th- than most years. But um, perfectly fine. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, I, I don't feel like we've had a major injury yet, so that's always good. That's the biggest thing for me is like Gavin Lux. I think happened pretty early in spring training last year when he tore his ACL, and I remember Reese Hoskins towards the end. Like we don't we don't need any of that. Uh, no. Just get through spring with as few in- injuries as possible, and hopefully no major ones. Were you a, a Florida spring training guy, or were you an Arizona no. spring training guy? No, a- Arizona is. I would rather be there anyway, but my dad <laughs> lives in Mesa. So I can just stay there, um, which always helps on the travel cost anyway. So kind of a double whammy there. There you go. There you go. Uh, we're talking to Matt Snyder of CBS Sports. And Matt, I guess Jackson Merrill is going to be the hot prospect that we're going to be talking about for the Padres here. And it might not even be prospect anymore because he might. I would think that he's has a good shot of making the the um, opening day roster is what I'm trying to say. But I know that you've had some thoughts on Jackson Merrill. Um, do you think it's safe to think that he's going to have an impact on this team in 2024? I, I don't know about safe for this year in particular. I mean, we're, we're talking about someone who hasn't been above double A before. And there are guys who can jump from double A straight to the majors and thrive right away. I mean, Juan Soto is one who comes to mind. He completely skipped triple A. He hadn't even played that many games at double A and he was amazing right away, but he, he's Juan freaking Soto. So it's <laughs> sometimes you'd like to see a little bit in triple A, but you know, let's say he starts the season in triple A and he tears it up there. Then I think you can say, yeah, he's definitely going to have an impact this year, but you never know if there's a slow start in triple A. You don't want to rush him, it, especially looking at, it, it's still a relatively crowded, you know, Padres roster, especially I, I know he's played other spots very minimally, but he's mostly a shortstop. And you, you've got Kim at shortstop who he just moves Xander Bogarts for. I kind of feel like if Kim got hurt, they would put Bogarts back at shortstop or have they hmm. said otherwise? Sorry if I've missed that. No, 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 no. Oh, it's okay. a, yeah, that Xander might be Bogarts a move that they second. made early in the season just so they didn't rush Merrill to the bigs, but I, I do think we'll see him this year. I just don't know how early and how big of an impact because, you know, sometimes guys get brought up and they struggle initially. I mean, and, and that's not an insult. I mean, even Mike Trout struggled his mm-hmm. first time around in the majors. So it's a big ask to say you've only played. I mean, it wasn't even a full season in double a, was it? It's a uh, 46 games in double a. Yeah. That's a big ask mm. to say only 46 games in double a straight to the majors don't struggle and stick. That's a, that's a big, that's a tall ask. Matt, uh, it, it brings me to this question. Uh, obviously right now, Jackson Merrill's in left field, uh, last handful of games and today started in center. And, and part of that obviously is because the Padres have a necessity out there. Uh, yeah. And that's part of the reason they've moved him out there. So uh, beyond Merrill, and obviously there are still free agents out there, guys like Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery, and we, we certainly understand that, Matt Chapman, but a lot of other options out there too as, as far as outfield options. Um, do you get the sense that the Padres are are done adding, or yeah. could it be a scenario where, where still there is a, a move or two to be made? It, it really feels like they're done, and I think it's because they're kind of tapped out payroll-wise, right? I mean, it's you're always going to say, if somebody's there, we'll add somebody at the right price. I just feel like the right price right now is just nothing, basically. So, yeah, I think they're done. I would be shocked if it was one of the bigger names. Um, and even once you get down to the non-roster invite types, it's hard to say that there's that many guys still out there who could actually help them. So I think they're probably done, at least in terms of moves that would move the needle there. And I, my apologies on Merrill playing outfield in spring training. Uh, I was not on the up and up on that. It's hard to follow 30 teams with oh, where totally. guys played in spring. I just know he's hardly played there in the minor so far. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, sorry about that. But it makes sense, right? Because of the way the roster is, you need help in the outfield more than the infield. So it absolutely makes sense. 
We're talking mm. to Matt Snyder of CBS Sports here on 97.3 The Fan. And uh, what we saw earlier today, well, Fernando Tatis Jr. has been a big part of this spring training. What do you think that he is going to, how much do you think, how much better do you think he's going to be prepared coming out of a full spring training into a full season rather than starting late and joining the team after suspension? Because I personally believe that he's going to have an MVP type year. Yes, I totally agree. I was just about to say that. Um, it's funny. I was all excited to name him like my sleeper for MVP. And then I look <laughs> and he's like the fourth highest favorite. So like, I think there's a lot of people thinking that. But look, this is a guy before the injury and suspension riddled 2022, who was an MVP caliber player. And probably the only reason he hadn't won one yet is because he hadn't played a full season because of injury. Uh, he basically played like an MVP from the start. Yeah, in his career, and he's 25 years old, and he he had a slow start last year after he came off that suspension, and that was a, after a full season off and recovering from multiple major injuries and the suspension where there's going to be rust anyway, and he still ended up putting up good numbers by the end of the year. I think he's going to be on an absolute rampage this year. Honestly, like what Acuna did last year, not off the board for what Tatis wow. could do this year. I think he could have a similar type season. Love that. Matt Snyder joining us, CBSSports.com. Matt, let's get off the Padres uh, for a second. Let's let's talk about more generally what's going on in, in Oakland and obviously the idea of uh, Major League Baseball expansion. It, it continues to be something that's uh, uh, talked about a lot, whether it be Nashville, obviously Las Vegas, what's going on in Oakland. What, what's your general takeaway? I know uh, up in Oakland they had that fan fest over the weekend. Looked like there were 15,000, 20,000 people there. <laughs> What, what what's your take on uh, what's going on in Oakland, uh, the move to Las Vegas, and and how this all continues to play out? And I and I suppose the idea of expansion as well. Yeah. Um. So okay. Uh, a couple of years ago, Man, Rob Manfred was asked about expansion, and the first thing he said was, "We have to get the situations settled with the A's and right. the Rays and their ballparks." It looked like those are getting settled. It looks like the Rays are going to get their ballpark probably on the Tampa side, uh, or no, wait, it was St. Petersburg, right? It, yeah, uh, whatever. They always change their plan. <laughs> it looks like the Rays, are, it looks like it's going to come to fruition that they're finally going to, I believe their lease with the Trops is up in 2027. So by 2028, it looks like they'll have a new home built there. Um, the A's, I still think that they eventually end up in Vegas. I know that there's been some kind of speed bumps here in the last few weeks and the A's are dragging their feet. Go figure that the ownership group and front office are bad at something, right? <laughs> um, I I think eventually they get to Vegas in that Tropicana site, although they still have, like I said, they've got some hoops to jump through, but I think that's what's going to happen eventually. And once that's settled, we are in the longest period of baseball where there hasn't been expansion in the history of Major League Baseball. So it, it, you can untap new regions you, you know, I, the Rays and Marlins probably aren't the best examples, but if you look at the type of fan base that they've built in Colorado with the Rockies, and I know it's not the greatest franchise, but their attendance figures are great. Their local TV ratings are great. Yeah. This is a franchise that is never going to have to threaten the move because it's such a good fan base. And to a lesser extent, Arizona Diamondbacks, it's a good franchise. Now, they want money for public financing for their ballpark and all that, so we mentioned maybe having to move. But their attendance is never, has never been dregs or anything. The only time it dropped below 2 million in a season was the last three years after 2020. But it's going to be back up now that they went to the World Series. It's a good franchise. You're looking for roots someplace like that. Maybe yeah. it's Portland, Oregon. Maybe it's Salt Lake City. Maybe mm. it's Nashville. Maybe it's Charlotte. Maybe it's the more Raleigh Durham area than Charlotte. I, I, I think that there are places where it could stick. Um, and hopefully they do a better jobs than like the, the two Florida franchises, but I, I really think that they will. Um, maybe early 2030s or so. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a little bit further out than I thought, but you know, one day well, they gonna... have to get, they have to get the A's and the Rays settled. That's true. That's true. And the A's, as we've talked about, we don't really know what's going to happen with them. We're talking to Matt Snyder of CBSSports.com here on Gwen and Chris, 97.3 The Fan. Sticking with Rob Manfred, we heard from him last week saying that he's going to step down, but he's going to do it in five years. I wasn't really yeah. sure why he <laughs> announced it so early because now... To me, anything that he says is kind of going to fall on, you know, I'm not going to hear it because he's not going to be there. But what do you think his legacy is going to be as the Major League Baseball commissioner? 
Um, hmm. It is funny, but I guess he already kind of does what he wants anyway, or basically what the owners want anyway, <laughs> yes. in addition to what he wants. Um, he doesn't really listen to, to the, a lot of the fan, the hardcore fans. He doesn't definitely doesn't listen to the players. Um, it's complicated because I, I'm of the opinion that no professional sports commissioner is ever going to be popular. Everything that's wrong, the fans are always going to complain that it's wrong and it's his fault or her fault, hopefully, in the near future. Um, a, a, everything that goes right, well, that doesn't have anything to do with the commissioner. Honestly, I think a lot of these rule changes, he's done a good job at trying to reach non-baseball fans and bring in non-baseball fans or bring back lapsed fans. Um, hmm. The problem is it makes diehard fans mad. Stuff like the pitch clock when he says the games need to be faster. That's because most people who don't watch baseball say the game's too slow and it takes too long. He's not going to diehard fans and saying, well, I know you guys want to get the game over with faster, so I'm going to do this. No, a lot of the diehard fans push back on that. But he's trying to bring in new fans and grow the game, and he's been trying to bring, grow the game internationally. Um, we could argue how successful he's been about anything, but um, it is, and I've written columns that have been critical of, of him in the past, and actually a couple weeks ago I made fun of him for <laughs> some comments he made on the TV deals. But I think he's been a net positive for the game. I, I really do. Net right. positive. A lot of negatives, but more positives, just in terms of trying to make the game more streamlined and better for the younger generation of fans or bringing back lapsed fans who th th thought the game was too slow and wasn't fast enough. Um, you know, and again, you're going to get diehard fans who get mad at him and say, I don't want a pitch clock. I don't need bigger bases, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, they're still watching. They're not going anywhere anyway. It's kind of like a, a restaurant who only has, you know, 20 regulars or so. <laughs> and you, you don't drive the regulars away, but you try to bring in new people so you can make the money. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what he does. All right. That, that was a good breakdown. Uh, Sam, I don't know if you, I, we, I texted you. I'm not sure if you got, if you have any more questions before I let Matt Snyder go. <laughs> uh, let's finish up with this, Matt, right now. And obviously uh, free agents still out there and we'll see who, who ultimately is playing center and left field and makes up the final two rotation spots for the Padres. But Matt, what are your realistic expectations for the Padres right now in 2024 based on what you know? Well, it's it's funny because you could totally paint a positive picture and say, look at the team last year. There was disarray. Tatis was out for a month. Uh, oh, and by the way, they went nine and twenty-three and one run games and two and twelve and extra innings. They forgot how to hit situationally so many times. So everything has to get better there, right? So if you looked at a team and it was the exact same roster, you'd say, man, they're six, seven games better than that at least, and they won 82, so maybe they might be close to a 91 team. But then you turn around and say, oh, and by the way, uh, Juan Soto, Blake Snell, and Josh Hader are out the door, though. So yeah. uh, kind of evens it out. I, I, I feel like maybe it's around an 82, 83-win 80, team this year, but if, if you have breaks, which last year they did not have any breaks, you can get more breaks and get to 85, 86 yeah. wins. And if that happens, a team like the Diamondbacks showed, you can make the World Series then. So yeah. they do need breaks to get back to being a playoff team. But I don't think they're that far away. If right. you just said in a vacuum, 82 wins and they lost three stars, then you'd be like, oh, man, they're going to suck this year. I don't <laughs> think that's the case. I think there were a lot of reasons to believe that they were going to be better. Well, we like to hear that, Matt Snyder. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll catch up with you here as the season comes uh, closer. Thanks, Matt. Okay, take care. That was Matt Snyder, CBSSports.com. Always appreciate Matt Snyder on the show. Um, when we we are headed to break here in just a second, but when we get back, Sam, we are going to talk about a tweet that I just saw mentioning Blake Snell and a National League West team. And see, you know, it's not what I wanted to read. It's not the Padres. They are not involved on Blake Snell. But oh, I yeah. I, I keep getting people in the DMs and, and during the Scraby show saying that the they should just throw the thirty million dollars of Blake Snell. Throw thirty million. Well, why? Well, why is Blake Snell commenting on Padres Instagram posts? Then we can Aha! also talk about that. The plot but I could thickens. Just, I could I could argue that he's just commenting on his friend. He's just happy for Being his friend. A supportive friend. Yes, but we'll tell you about How the wholesome. Blake <laughs> Blake Snell rumors when we get back here on ninety seven three The Fan.
Well, hello, back in here with you at the Odyssey Palace on 97.3 The Fan. My voice got really deep there because I said something and I felt like it was too high of a voice. But, you know, I'm also sitting alongside Sam Levitt, with who's got the silky smooth pipes of a radio announcer. So it, it, I feel a little bit of self-consciousness when I'm around you, Sam, and your voice. <laughs> well, um, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I had something on the tip of my tongue, and I, okay. I couldn't think of what to say. Okay. I'm tongue twisted, tongue tied. Your tongue if you will. twisted. What I well then because then I started thinking about Sam Levitt Jr. and, uh, and ah. his voice, and Sam Levitt Jr. is is he's got silky smooth, uh, silky smooth uh, tones. So. Okay, well we let's we'll get into Blake Snell here in just a second, but I've okay. heard a lot about this um, Sammy Lev Jr. And so Adam's been telling me about this. I haven't heard the first portion of audio with Woods interviewing him, but let's, uh, Adam, if you're ready, let's play that. Oh, I, oh, I thought, oh, sorry. He put his hand up like, yeah, I'm ready. Now, I, now I know what Chris and Tony go through when I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> not ready to go. Um, he needs one second, but so I guess you have a fan out there and this yes. fan is, he does a great impersonation of you. And so Woods caught up with him. What, ha what happened was I got a DM on Instagram yesterday morning saying, basically, hey, we, we have a kid, um, son, nephew, uh, I think son, uh, whatever. I, I got to check the DM again. Um, who does this great impression of you? Like it's spot on. And I, I hadn't seen it yet. And before I saw it, I guess also Woods got a DM about it. <laughs> And on the backfields yesterday, they ran into this kid, and I think he, we have the we have it ready. Had, so he let's... had an impression. Now I want to say this: I don't think it, it sounds like me per se, but I will say if you watch the video, the mannerisms and the cadence, which you will hear, I, is pretty good. Yeah. I'll and the by the way, that. maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the voice is is more spot on than I think. But All you right. can judge for yourself. Let's hear from Woods and Sammy Love Jr. Hey guys, it's Woodsy live from uh, spring training. I'm joined by uh, Sam Levitt Jr. Sam, how are you? Pretty good right now. Um, everything's going quite well here at spring training. It's a beautiful sunny day here at spring training. How are you? Uh, I'm doing very well. Uh, who are you going to be uh, looking forward to seeing today? Well, Fernando Tatis Jr. playing left field, well, right field, is a great thing for the San Diego Padres. And Manny Machado, hopefully he can come back pretty soon. Sammy, uh, any other insight on the uh, 2024 season? What do you expect from the pods this year? Well, I expect there to be a lot of south down for the San Diego Padres, but hopefully they can dig their way up into the postseason. Sam, good talking to you, buddy. Nice talking to you. Have a good one. Wow, I will say that the, the voice is not necessarily like yours, but the delivery is absolutely like yours. He had well, the, the point beautiful was, down. He had yes, all of that stuff yes, down. Yes, the, the point was made to me. This is a, a fairly young kid. I don't know. I put him at maybe 12, 13-ish yeah, yeah, like years that. old. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, when, when uh, Max, his name is, by the way, uh, when he gets a little bit older, he might be able to, you know, get the voice down like exactly, but pretty good. The cadence and uh, the mannerisms too. If you watch the video, pretty good, pretty good. So, it is pretty good. You have I, I loved it. Video. Had a good time meeting. Me. I met Max today. Ben and Woods put out another video where I talked to Max, aka Sammy Jr. So that's, all good. That's a lot the, of fun. Oh, here it is. We actually have it. Here is Sam Levitt interviewing we don't Sammy need, Jr. No, no, we don't need. Come on. I know, if you want to play it, go Well, it's already Sam Levitt, all you know. Fury, Arizona, Padre <laughs> Spring Training, and I'm joined by Sam Levitt, Sam Levitt Jr. <laughs> Sam Levitt Jr., where'd you get those sunglasses? They look awfully familiar. Well, I, I got them at Chicago, <laughs> so, you know, it was a nice thing to get them there. Okay, now you are a Padres expert. We heard your expertise on the team yesterday. Yes. How do you know so much about the San Diego Padres? Well, I pretty much have watched them since I was born. <laughs> there's See, more I, think, that video, I think the but... voice was a little bit better yesterday yeah i think I maybe was he was standing on. right in front of you and he was like i maybe don't know if nervous. i should uh yeah i would be nervous too if i was standing in front of you and needed to make fun of your voice <laughs> or impersonate your voice but good job sammy jr good yes. job ben and woods all of that it was good a lot of good fun yes uh we're gonna get to the daily gambit here in just a second but i said blake snell may be on the move or at least rumored to be in 
talks with a National League West team that is not the Padres, and that team is the San Francisco Giants. Susan Slusser of the San Francisco Chronicle is actually, she put it out there saying that the Blake Snell deal might be 50-50, um, and they're also in on Matt Chapman as well. So Blake Snell, coming back to the Padres, don't think it's going to happen, but I definitely do not want him to go to San Francisco. I, I'm I'm very confused about this Blake Snell offseason because he's coming off one of the best years of his career. Yeah. And he can't get he can't get what he A wants or B, I guess, needs from teams. Well, I, I am hesitant to say that he's not gonna get what he wants yet hmm. because we, we just don't know. And even though Cody Bellinger ended up signing a much shorter contract than I think what we would have originally anticipated, it, it ended up quite frankly being a good deal for him and a good deal for the Cubs. Um, when you consider the money and, and the ability for him to get out of it after this year, if he has another good year and hit the open market, I, I'm hesitant to say that Blake's not going to get ultimately what he wants. Let's see what it ends up being. But look, it's been really odd. It's been an odd off season. Uh, this is, I mean, I could go on about this for 20 minutes about what I think uh, uh, about free agency going on this long at the spring training, why it's just not good for baseball yeah, and for baseball definitely. fans. Yeah. Um, but let's forget about that part. You know, look, it's been odd. I mean, to have Snell and Montgomery and Bellinger and Chapman and guys like JD Martinez and my goodness, Garrett Cooper signing a minor league deal. I, I, I just, it's been a very odd off season. The market has been so slow aside from the flurry of moves when Otani and Yamamoto signed, um, the Soto deal. I, I mean, it's just been so slow. So look, the, the question now is based on what Bellinger did and based on the fact that it is literally March in a couple of days. The question now is, is Blake ultimately, no matter who he signs with, ultimately going to get the longer term, bigger money deal that I think we all anticipated coming off a second Cy Young? Yeah. Or is he going to get something that's smaller? Now, it may be a very high AAV. It may be a very high number for this year. But is there a possibility that he, A, gets something smaller, or B, you know, is is forced to, to kind of take a deal that would put him back on the market again next year when maybe the market just acts more like what we're used to? So uh, there seems to be a lot on the table right now based on the deal that Bellinger signed, right? Because. Yeah. You know, if you would have looked at things at the beginning of the offseason, you would have said, okay, Cody Bellinger is going to sign a, a pretty long and, and pretty big money deal. And he ended up signing essentially a three year, whatever it is, $80 million deal that allows him to get out of the deal after this year or after next year. It, it essentially gives him security in the sense that if he has another great year, he can go back in the market yeah. and then maybe next year get that big deal. So it's going to be fascinating. Um, you know, look, obviously, if you're a Padres fan, you don't want him in the NL West. You'd rather him go somewhere else. Um, but look, the Giants, not just this year, but for a while, they have tried to land big time free agents. And for the most part, it has not been successful. No. So, um, look, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the deal is. But uh, I would believe really anything with Blake Snow at this point because it's it's almost March. I know. There's there's a couple things about Blake Snell I wanted to talk about, which Jerks and Profar answered one of my questions, so we might hear from him. But I, I, what the Giants are doing, aside from Blake Snell, I think that they're just trying to throw money at a wall and see where it sticks because they kind of haven't, uh, I guess, been very tactful in the way that they're signing their players, like giving Lee $113 million when he was projected at like $90 million yeah. over six years. Just certain things like that it just seems like they are a little bit of maybe not panic, but there's a little bit of urgency to get some guys that they know what they can bring to the team. Well, look, they have basically thrown money at a lot of guys and it just hasn't worked, right? That's going back to the Carlos Correa situation yeah. where they had yeah. him and then the medicals, right? And then the Mets, same thing happened with Correa. That was a weird scenario. Totally. But the Giants did that. They wanted Aaron Judge, right? It was down to the Giants and the Yankees. Couldn't get him to come. Otani, they were in on him. Couldn't get him to come. I think they were somewhat in on Yamamoto, if I recall correctly. Couldn't get him to come. Um, yeah, they've really, really tried to throw money around and get guys to come there. And, and you're, to your point, look, they gave Lee a deal 
that was a lot higher than what the initial a expectation was. So look, uh, here's the thing, right? When we're talking about Blake Snell or Montgomery or, or any of this, if a team really wants somebody, you can go get them. You've got to offer more money than everybody else and it's give them what they want. Society. And to this point, Scott Boris has not compromised. Now on the Bellinger deal, clearly there was some sort of compromise there and it ends up being a pretty good deal for him and for the Cubs for this year and maybe a couple of years after that. Um, we're going to find out in the, in the next month whether Scott Boris, and this is rare for him, misplayed the market and sort of misplayed his hand if all these guys don't end up on long, big money contracts. Here's some it's going to be fascinating. Here's some conspiracy. It's the owners teaming up together to lock out Boris clients because basically they know that Boris can come in and do whatever the heck he wants with his contracts. Like they're going to accept it. And so teams are now trying to correct the market with their by locking out his players. And I know that Tony said I'm crazy. I know that Chris said I'm crazy. But the further gotta, we go into be this careful, whole thing, Scraby. don't don't throw around the uh I'm not saying words that sound like collusion. Oh gosh, I'm not be saying careful, that. Scraby. I'm not. Be I'm not careful. I'm not saying that collusion is actually a thing because I did <laughs> say it was a conspiracy theory before I started this. But I, I just, it's, it's insane that there is that well, amount of guys on the market still with the amount of talent they have. So look, I think it's surprising. Now there are factors, real factors, I think, at play. Right, number one. You have a number of these teams in the in situations where they are very unsure of the amount of TV money coming in, which we know is significant, right? We know it's something that's clearly impacted the Padres. Number two, the reality is that you have a couple of teams that the last couple of years have been very much in on spending a lot of money in big-time free agents that right now are not. The Padres being one of them. The Mets being one of them, even though they were, you know, Yamamoto was the exception. They were in on him. The Yankees being one of them. Rangers. Um, Rangers being one of them. Keep in mind, they signed Seager and they signed Simeon to big contracts. They spent contracts. money over the last few years. You have a number of teams that normally are willing to dole out that kind of money that are not. So, he. <laughs> There's a lot of factors, I think, at play as to why this market has played out the way it has. Um, it's going to be fascinating. I don't know. I, if I had a crystal ball, I'd tell you. I don't know what kind of contracts they get. I don't know where they go. What's been super odd about it, too, is that there's just been like a, a lack of rumors. I mean, there's been like nothing on Snell for the most part all offseason. There's been like nothing on Montgomery for the most part all offseason. There's been like nothing on Chapman. There's not even like rumors. Yeah. And again, I could go on for, and I know we got to get to the daily gambit, but, um, or if we're doing that next second, we're now. actually going to go in a different direction, but, um, okay. Yes. Sorry for ruining it's the, okay. uh, the schedule. I, I mean, um, it's, it's just your show, <laughs> Sam. We're living in it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This, this has been a, this has been a theme since the open of the show. I'm just, he's I'm, just spicy I'm, Sammy. I'm Are we going to start calling him spicy Sam? But um, I can't even remember what I'm saying. What I was saying now. Well, but, here's uh, what I'll, while while you try and remember, I'll go in this direction. The, the the further that Blake Snell waits to get into a spring training camp, the more I wonder how much of the season is it going to eat into. And Jerks and yeah. Profar was asked by Ben and Woods about last year when he didn't have a spring training and whether or not it affected him. So this is not Blake Snell saying it, but it is a major league baseball player. Now, obviously, we've never been through that. We don't know what it's like, but we always say that's got to be a t- terrible feeling texting your agent anything right. anything at all like what are we going to do really where bad. am i going really bad. yeah really bad. and and so when you got to colorado um you know it, like you said you didn't have a spring training so you mm-hmm. kind of felt like you were behind already how did the, the season you know play out for you were you were you happy were you not happy how, how did that go <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> Everything was fine. It's fine. It's fine. It was fine. Well, fine. let's just say everything, you're... Was, uh, everything was fine. You're glad to be back. I'm glad to be really glad to be back. Good. And, and you, could, you could have seen it when I when I when I came back last year. Yep. You know. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 I played pretty good when I when I came back. Yeah, and the team you played know, really was, well uh, when you came back yes. as well. Was it? Did you find it hard coming back? Um, you know, it's a business decision. Everybody's got to make the, the decisions that, that's right for their family at the time. 
Um, I bet it was really hard to leave, though. Yes, it was. It was. I, I I wanted to come back, but like you said, it's 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 a business and things things didn't didn't go yeah. they didn't go my way. You know. Well, I think he's saying that yes, it will affect him, and so Blake Snell needs to get on a team and start. I'm I'm sure that he's working out, but it's just it's a whole different thing when you go and meet your teammates and find yeah. your facilities and get used to all that. Yeah. Look, I I think it is with each passing day a fair question and i would imagine a concern well let's start with the fair question the fair question is is at what point do you get to a part of spring training where you start worrying as a front office that the guy you're signing may may be affected at least in the first year of whatever contract he signs by the weirdness of of what's gone on here and the fact that he's not at spring training yet and we do know we do know for as good and as talented as Blake is that he's somebody who likes to be comfortable right and he's talked about it it took him time to to get comfortable in San Diego Tampa was very uh, was a place he was really comfortable in so whether it's Blake or Montgomery or, or Chapman whatever whatever player it is at this point that's not signed especially in the pitching side where you got to build up and ramp up and you haven't faced live hitters, it gets to a point pretty soon here where if I'm a team, I, I do have, I do have legitimate question yeah. about, about, okay, well, we signed you to, let's say a five-year deal, but man, we, we don't even know what we're getting really this season because you haven't been here. So it's, I don't know. It's a, it's whole a can really of worms. weird situation. It's a whole yeah, can yeah. of worms. I, I don't know. But meanwhile, you would assume these guys are waiting because they're waiting for the right offer. So I, I again, it, it's a question of at what point, you know, and you could argue it already has. Does the fact that spring training is well underway start working against these guys in I a real way? I think it does. I think so it does. You, you may be right. You may be right. All right. And the profile, and that that was by the way, just on Profar. That was a funny answer from Profar, just because of course last year. You know, he declines the option with the Padres, yeah. ends up with the Rockies. It was like the same number money-wise. Yep. And uh, didn't have a good year and, and clearly wanted to be back in San Diego. And he did get his, and, uh, was not happy back. with how it all panned out. Absolutely in the last not. Year. Yeah. Uh, this hour is brought to you by the Farmer's Dog. When we get back, we'll review some quick bets in the Daily Gambit. Not a whole Daily Gambit, but we My will fault. also. It's okay, Sam. We're good. Uh, we will also have some more Padres talk from spring training here. Coming up next on 97.3 The Fan. But first, your traffic report. From the-
Back here in the Odyssey Palace, 97.3 The Fan. Matt Scraby filling in for Gwen and Chris. Sam Levitt with me as well. He is out in Peoria doing great things. He's dancing in the camera right now. So you, I think when Sam comes on, you have to be watching. <laughs> you, I mean, there's just so much going on with the experience of Sammy Lev that you have to be watching. So go to YouTube, search 97.3 The Fan, and you will find the live broadcast. Well, what I what I, what I I sometimes forget the last couple of weeks when I've done a couple of shows falling in here for my Airbnb, say so I do it in my living room, so I've got plenty of space here. In fact, in between segments, I think not this past break, but the break before, I went laid down on the couch for a little bit. Wow. I don't know if anybody noticed that. Um, but it gives me some room to walk around. So I'm like kind of walking around. I don't even realize that we're coming back and then I get caught. It's okay. You know, it back was, here. It was doing actually whatever. really funny. It was actually really funny to see you walk so. around because <laughs> people need to understand the Sammy Love pace. And the Sammy Love pace is a real thing. I think Adam knows what? exactly what I'm talking about. Pace. You pace around the hallways <laughs> more than any person. <laughs> Maybe, maybe our our I coworker do. Scotty. I do. He pace. paces more, but you pace a lot. I do pace. Yeah. What is, I, is I, that? Is when that I'm just... thinking, I'm pacing. Yes. <laughs> so Sam, if you caught that when we came back, you saw the back and forth pacing, and that's just uh, that's yeah, like a millisecond I, uh, of what it is. If I get if I get nervous about something, I will start pacing. Really? I, I don't even realize that I'm doing it sometimes. Like sometimes, if I'm alone, let's say I'm I'm in the Airbnb here, even. And I get anxious about something, I will start pacing. And then sometimes I'm like, Sam, stop. <laughs> like, go sit. I, I, I'll, I'll catch myself doing it. So I do pace. Uh, do, Jocelyn right. says, You are now Titan Sammy because of how spicy you are today. So oh. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, real quick, let's go through some of the bets that we made from yesterday. Uh, but first, you need to listen to Sam Levitt's podcast, Inside San Diego Baseball. Sam will cover everything going on with the Padres in spring training. Find it at 97.3thefansd.com, the Odyssey app, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right. So yesterday, just quickly, we bet on North Carolina and Miami. Now, this game was kind of interesting because North Carolina was a 14-point favorite in this one. But Miami, at one point with like three minutes to go, I believe North Carolina was up 13 points or 14 points. So we thought this was looking pretty good. Didn't I mean, it didn't finish well for the Tar Heels. And they ended up winning, but they gave up that entire lead. And they won by four points. So Chris was the only one here that won with Miami. Uh, Tony and I chose North Carolina. And I, there was a record set last night. Like the most points ever scored in uh, Dean Smith Pavilion where the Tar Heels play. So it was a historic night as well. TCU played Baylor last night. TCU, a two and a half point favorite in that game. Chris was the only one who went with the Horn Frogs. Uh, Tony and I went Baylor, and TCU ended up winning 62 54. So they covered the spread. So Chris wins that one. Colorado women's basketball against UCLA. UCLA, six and a half point favorites in that one. Uh, Chris and Tony chose Colorado. I chose UCLA, and UCLA won by, they won 53 45. So eight points. I win that one. Final one Edmonton Oilers were one and a half. They were the favorites on the puck line, one and a half goals. Tony and Chris chose Kings. I chose the Oilers, and the Oilers won four to two. So I finish out strong. Now, tonight, we did this bet already yesterday, and it would be the Celtics against the Sixers because Chris didn't realize that the game was actually tonight. Celtics are 12 point favorites. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. Pretty incredible that Joel Embiid goes out and the 76ers fall apart, but all of us chose the Celtics for tonight at uh 12 point Wait, favorites. hold on why why is that surprising that Embiid would go out in the 76 well because fall apart? well be, i mean Embiid's their best player obviously but they have completely fallen off the face of the earth ever since he left oh. and and i don't feel like it should be yeah they, they've got enough talent that with maxi and tobias harris and some other guys they've got enough talent i would think to be all right ish yeah, Joel Embiid is but, it's great, but yeah, not fall off the face of the earth. I haven't I haven't paid super close attention to, to what they've been doing. But have you been surprising. paying attention to what's going on with the uh NFL running backs and the franchise tag and all that? Uh well I saw um no, honestly, not really. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I do a great job during the offseason paying attention to a lot, I think. Okay. But let me fill you in. Since, 
since I've been here, I, I real I honestly am so out of the loop on other other sports. Jocelyn says we're watching on YouTube in my office. My eight year old Penelope is with me for a bit before school gets out. You saying my name just tripped her out. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> you know what? Tri- you know what trips my nieces out is when they're in the car and my sister's visiting and she just puts on the radio and they're like, "What? Where is he? Where is he?" Anyway, um, the <laughs> franchise tag situation in the NFL for running backs is terrible and saquon barkley probably not or he did not get franchise tagged a couple other guys didn't get franchise tagged but the franchise tag right now is the top five top five salaries average for the position so right now for wide receivers we talked about it Uh 21.8 million dollars for their franchise tag for running backs this year it's 11.95 million dollars so almost 10 million dollars less and I just don't see why you would ever want to play running back in the NFL anymore. Uh, you don't get paid. They do not take care of you. They will throw you to the curb as fast as they can. And if I'm Austin Eckler, Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, I'm, I, I, I guess I can't say hold out because the teams aren't going to give in. So it's kind of a crazy situation. And I think the NFL needs to do something about it. Yeah, it, it's hard, um, and I won't act like I'm I'm the expert or I'm, or I'm all caught up to speed on on everything. But I think this is actually something we talked about around this time last year, it was, Scraby, yes, or at some we point because we were yeah. we, you and I on a show I filled in uh, filled in on. I think we actually talked about Barkley. Um, look, the situation for running backs is is yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's 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 unfortunate because it's a position where the best years are considered at the very beginning, right? Yeah. And it's not the part of their careers. And this is really for any player right now in any sport, for the most part, where you get paid. So it's seen as really dispensable. So, yeah, I I would think the NFL and the Players Association, they got to figure out a way where these guys can can get paid earlier. They Um, have I don't know how you do that. You know, I don't know how you do that and you differentiate them from others. But um, well, yeah, they, they does, do the it whole... certainly does not encourage guys to to be running backs, although you need them. Yeah. Um, or do so, you? Yeah, it's tricky. Or I... or honestly, to not hold out. Right. Because if you're a guy who's a top running back, you just say a couple of years in, hey, I'm holding out because this is my one chance where I got to I got to force you to, to pay me. But then you're playing that game of chicken like the, ba- the right. baseball and, and the teams are doing. Right. And the team's at the team's attitude as well. <laughs> Yeah, we we can go get somebody for cheaper, and maybe won't be quite as good as you, but we'll. we'll I think get Ezekiel by. Elliott ruined the running back pay structure because he got paid so much money by the Cowboys, and they ended up just having to basically move on from that contract because yeah. it was hurting them so much. I think I think running backs should get paid. They are a focal part of the offense. If you touch the ball during the season at least like twenty five percent of the time, you deserve to get paid because that is something that you are in control of the team's kind of future a little bit and you should be able to make some money off of that. Well, look, there are, um, look, there are still backs that obviously get paid and have a huge impact. I mean, look at this, you know, it's funny. The Super Bowl really shows you two very different situations, right? One with McCaffrey where he is a high paid guy Mm -hmm. and obviously a star of that offense. And then I'm not saying Pacheco is, is not a good back. He is. He is. Yeah. But look, the, the chiefs have sort of proved that, you can get by with not a quote unquote star running back or somebody that you're paying a ton in Pacheco. Right. And he's been good. He's, he's, he's been very productive for them, but uh, yeah, it's, weird situation. It's anyway, definitely I know this is not daily gambit related. But. No, it's okay. We're already done with the daily gambit. I was oh, that's it. We're this. done. Well, we don't have I, any, bets. I thought the daily gambit used to have a hole open. There was, well, we do, but today you kept talking. And so then we had to move away from the daily gambit. <laughs> So spicy <laughs> scraby over here it's after right. spicy salmon. Yeah, no, you, you know what? You know what? You do the daily gambit every day. Cool. Chris actually does do most of the the bets now. So I used to do them. I told him I couldn't handle it anymore, and so now he does them. But then he yeah, does them see for somebody's games. Com- see yeah. somebody's commenting in the chat. Do you like? Mo- I know. I know that open. Do you like money? And it goes 
Duh. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> well, Sam does listen to that. Sammy does listen. I do. I, what are you talking about? I listen to all the shows. Uh, yes, I know you do. Sam definitely does. All right. We're going to get the break. When we get back, we're going to hear from new pitcher Michael King, the centerpiece in my mind of the trade. Don't ask him that because he doesn't think it. He just thinks that he's coming in. He's part of the team. Ben and Woods interviewed him this morning, so we'll have that when we get back here on 97.3 The Fan.
If you love Mediterranean food, try Spiro's for authentic Mediterranean cuisine in Coronado or La Jolla. For dining or takeout options, visit SpirosCuisine.com. I uh, just talked to Chris. He is supposedly on time, so we will see him at some point in the 4 o'clock hour. And Tony is on his way back from uh, Peoria to his Airbnb. Now, did you hear about the big Airbnb kerfuffle, Sam, that happened to Ben and Woods? I did. I did. And I told them in no way, shape or form should they pay for that first night. No, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Like, that's disgusting to have sheets. No, that's and, terrible. And terrible. towels and all that stuff. Yeah, and luckily uh, my Airbnb to this point has worked out quite nicely, if I do say so myself. So, did you uh, book I, it or uh, did Adam book it for you? I booked it myself. Well, that was not a shot at Adam. I was just wondering because. Sammy but I thought Ben and I thought Ben and Woods booked theirs themselves. Am they I off did. On that? They did, but they used to give Adam a hard time about the ones that uh, that he booked them, okay. and so he yeah, had look, a great tweet he, yesterday saying it's not so easy to book Airbnbs, right. huh? Look, you with the air I, now. I love Airbnb, but look, you always run the risk of it not being quite what you thought it was going to be. And I've had a little bit of that in the past, where nothing, nothing terrible, but where it's like, oh, this is not quite as nice or as big or as <laughs> spacious as I as I thought it was going to be. I've I've really lucked out with this one, though. It's been it's been really good. Um, but yeah, no, unacceptable. To walk in and yeah, has been clean. the The sheets are on the floor from the previous people that followed the directions to put the sheets on the floor. And <laughs> want, yeah, come on. I I could say that I I actually um I don't know that I've ever really had a good Airbnb experience before. Really, I, wow. I've only done it like three times, maybe, and. I, I just think that they're not really checking as much as they're saying that they're checking. Well, yeah, look, the, the risk you run is that it's not being run by, let's say, like a hotel where that is their business, right? It's being run by individuals. They have to be on top of their stuff. You got to read the reviews, too. Like, yes. it's very critical that you read the reviews because sometimes you'll read reviews where there's just enough bad reviews where you know you should avoid it but uh yeah all good here so you know uh um, sorry welsh fryer said <laughs> something where did it go it oh he said they've given me a crippling fear of airbnbs which no, i think is you hilarious shouldn't. yeah you should and i've had mostly good experiences what uh, about you welsh sam fryer. are you gonna give a tour um i don't think so there's not that interesting it's not a house i mean it's it's a one bedroom thing with a living room and a kitchen so all it's, right, well, it's not it's not terribly interesting all to right, well i'm just trying to have fun with, with with sam levitt but spicy sam is here and he's all down the business <laughs> that is what he wants to do today um we oh, have i some... guess i could give you a tour well I couldn't give a tour. It's okay. Island, so. I was more joking because uh, okay. a tour for radio is not a very great idea, I don't <laughs> think. Uh, we're going to have some traffic, and then on the other side, we're going to hear from Michael King, who was with Ben and Woods this morning. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. A few problems here. Watch out for a fender in the left lane on westbound 905 right before the 805. Also traveling on eastbound 52 near the 15 stall car with the right shoulder. Pleasure involving a couple cars on the Carmel Valley Road on ramp to northbound 5. And hit run crash the clearing stage on southbound 805 right before Governor. It's in the center divide. I'm Kelly Danik with Gwen and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. All right, so we had uh, Gwen and Chris had Michael King on earlier in this year, kind of to start the year off. And when we heard from him, we Tony and I were both like, wow, this guy is for real. This guy's legit. We love this guy. And mm -hmm. it's just been glowing reports ever since. And I know that he still has to prove it, you know, on the mound. But he was with Ben and Woods this morning. And one of the things that they asked him that I thought was pretty interesting would be Joe Musgrove. What are his thoughts on Joe Musgrove? Because, you know, when you go into the clubhouse now, Joe Musgrove is likely the guy that you are going to look to for leadership. So they asked Michael King about Joe Musgrove and he gave his thoughts. He's incredible. Uh, extremely hard worker. Um, he, he almost makes me feel like I'm not doing enough. I feel like I do a lot. So um, he's, he, I don't know if I've beaten him to the field yet this, this spring. Uh, he's here all the time. And then just talking to him baseball wise, he's such a student of the game. And it's, it's great for me because I had my nine starts last year, but, I'm still learning as a starting pitcher. And now I got a guy like Joe that can actually teach me about his routine, his bullpen routine, uh, how he's attacking hitters, what he sees in different swings, why do 
do something in a second or third time through. And it's something that's like absolutely invaluable to me. I, I think that Joe Musgrove, and I know that he came into the, the, with he came to the Padres not necessarily as a leader, but he has become a leader with the Padres, and he's become the go-to guy in the clubhouse. And yeah. it seems like he he like loves that role. He likes that role because he's able to help his teammates and everything. But Michael King is telling everybody what we already know about Joe Musgrove, so it's good that they have a guy like Joe in the in the rotation in the bullpen or in their pitching ranks that can help them establish some sort of you know routine and work ethic yeah no doubt look it's no surprise to hear other guys say that about joe we know he's an incredibly hard worker and we know he's a good guy right like one one thing that michael's talked about before and that a lot of guys have talked about is how much they enjoyed and how important that pitchers camp in san diego was before spring training began and from what i understand that was you know a lot of that was joe you know, not only the the pitching part of it and having everybody there and the catchers and Ruben Diabla, but also the the social aspect of it and some of the different activities they did and, and just bonding time they had with all these new faces. You consider all the the new guys on this pitching staff, the Yankees guys and Yuki Matsui and Wusa Go and uh, list goes on and on, others as well. So a lot of new faces and Joe's a leader. There's no doubt about it. We know that. Uh, we're not breaking any news to anybody, but he's a leader. Um, he's earned that respect inside that clubhouse, and he continues to uh, lead by what he says and lead by what he does on the field and his actions, right? And, mm-hmm. and It's all uh, about being, the being that guy. Yeah, look, Joe is he's no doubt a leader inside that clubhouse and a guy that younger pitchers or, or new guys to the organization, even like Michael King, can look to. So, um, yeah, I mean – we're not breaking any news to, no. to Padres fans who who know Joe and, and know the quality of person and, and work that he does. So not surprised at all to, to hear Michael King say that. And, you know, look, again, with Michael King, and, and I'm sure people had the takeaway from this interview with Ben and Woods, you know, he, he sort of falls in line, I think, A, with like a really good guy and B, somebody who clearly works really hard and yes. takes his craft really seriously. So I, I totally can see where, uh, Joe Musgrove and Michael King would would get along because I think they, they do have things in common for sure. Very much so. Uh, Michael King was also with uh, talking to Ben Woods about his discussions with the pitching whisperer, Ruben Niebla, and he was uh, talking whisper. about pitching whisperer. Yes, he was talking about his workload. Yeah, he season. is. Absolutely. I just didn't expect you to say it. Okay, oh. play it. <laughs> Ruben said there's going to be no restrictions, um, but they're just going to monitor it. And and now I'm okay with that. They had Seth Lugo last year yep. go from 60 to 150 or whatever it is. And um, so I, I was appreciative. I, he said that we're going to monitor if your arm slot, arm slot starts dropping, if your velocity starts dropping. I got to be communicative about how my body's feeling. And as long as all those things are checking out, then he said you're full go. Um I know Lugo's best month last year was in September. And so it's like a guy that has never pitched that much had his best month with all these innings on his arm. So um, I think it's great that I'm in the situation that I'm in because they just did it last year. Um, But I I feel like there should be no restrictions. I'm going to make sure that I take care of my body and make sure that I'm I'm healthy enough to do it. He also helped me win a fantasy baseball championship last year. So that's why he has greatness built all over him. But Michael, Michael King talking about Ruben Niebla and, saying he's full go if he wants to be. I think that's awesome. Now, he uh, he's never pitched. You said earlier that he he had a goal of 180 innings that he put out there. Yeah. Yeah, so one thing that that he said to me um when I did a one-on-one with him within the last 5 to 7 days somewhere around there was that he has put the goal at 180 innings and that he's not a, a super goal oriented guy at least by by putting like you know numbers on things or like very specific uh goals on on a season but that 180 is the number that they're shooting for that he's shooting for and look 180 would be a lot it would be a huge increase from a year ago but look anything is possible if you stay healthy and you're effective for sure and michael king has that opportunity and he's also as we've talked about never had the opportunity to to really be a starting pitcher from the outset of a season so he's getting a, a, a tremendous opportunity that he has not uh been given in his career to this point but uh, look I, I do think it is interesting that he is willing to put a number on it 
Um, I thought the comparison to Seth Lugo is a really good one. Lugo is a guy who, much like Michael King, a really established good reliever, like great stuff and has been there, done that in the bullpen. And there's no doubt his stuff plays in a big way in the major leagues. And if you look at Lugo last year, he went from 65 innings to 146. King threw a combined uh, 104 innings, which, by the way, was 40 more than he had ever thrown yeah. in a major league season. Um, I'm not sure about 19, like how many innings he threw in total, but I'm just looking at kind of 21, 22, 23 through 104 last year, which was a, a career high for him. So look, he's, he is looking for something similar to Seth Lugo. In fact, you know, really similar in the sense that Lugo went from 65 to 146. So he, he went up 80. Okay. So he went up 80 innings. Michael King, if he were to hit that 180 number, he'd have to go up a little bit less than 80 innings from a year ago. So I don't think the idea that that King and Ruben Diablo would look to Lugo as sort of a blueprint. And remember, Lugo also missed time. He did, too, yeah. That that, I was thinking about so that, yeah. So that, he, he got there even with that. I don't think um, the idea that they would use Seth as a little bit of a blueprint as to as to keep yourself healthy and your arm healthy, which Lugo's arm was, it wasn't an arm issue that he ran into. Um, I think that's smart on the part of Michael King because it is a it is a similar scenario, a little bit different in the sense that King started at the end of last year in New York. But look, they have similar goals, Lugo and King. They want to pitch a lot of innings. They're getting their first opportunity to be a starter from the outset of a season. Um, and they have some pretty high innings goals. So I think I think smart on the part of King and Niebla. And Michael King, from a stuff perspective, has shown all the right things, and he's certainly saying all the right things. Oh, so, yeah. I, look, I certainly hope for him and the Padres that that 180 number is something they can hit. It's a big goal. It's a tall order. It is. But you stay healthy and you're effective. You could get there. I know. I'm looking King. at his uh, September, as you just said. And so – at least in five appearances in September, he started three games. He struck out 13 against the uh, Blue Jays in seven innings on September 20th. But he, you know, it looks like his stats are trending towards a, he can definitely be a starter thing. And I don't think that's a question for anyone, but it is kind of weird for me as a guy who's not maybe a baseball pitching expert, but to yeah. hear that they, they are banking on him being a part of the rotation uh, without actually knowing that he could do a full year of starting pitching. Well, look, uh, again, you know, he, he's getting the opportunity. He's never had the opportunity, yeah. right? So I, I think you have to be fair with it in saying that obviously this is a, this is a year for Michael King where he does have something to prove. There's no doubt about that because he's never done it. And that's not his fault. He's never been given the opportunity. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say from a stuff perspective and the effectiveness he's had out of the bullpen, like Michael King's got the stuff to get guys out and be a starting pitcher. Yeah. Um, it's going to be about the doing it every fifth day. It's going to be about the staying healthy. It's going to be about the ability to go from, you know, a hundred innings total last year to a lot more than that. You know, yeah. can you do that in one season? Can you make that jump? Um, and you hope he can, you hope he can. So I'm, a, I'm really excited about Michael King. Um, I really am because I think he's clearly very talented. I think clearly is really great stuff. The numbers are the numbers. He's been really good. Yeah. Um, much like Lugo and, you know, I think the makeup is great. What we've heard so far. And he seems like his head's in the right place. So he's got good um, energy too. I like it. I yeah. I, I'm, I'm very, I, I think a lot of people, around the organization are very in this part of the reason why they wanted him to my knowledge <laughs> they're very bullish on michael king like really are and i also think like this could be just long term for michael this could be a year where okay you're transitioning a little bit right mm -hmm. you gotta get that innings number up you're, you're gonna shoot for 180 we'll see if you get there if you can get it to even i don't know 150 160 to me that is a real success just based on the jump yeah but this may just be the one year where you're making that jump and he could be if he's effective 
man, he could really set himself up really well moving forward as a starting pitcher. And he's not, you know, uh, Michael King is only uh, he's young. Uh, he's only 28. Yeah. So, you know, oh, look looking at, that. at free age. Born yeah, on my birthday. A, in a, in a, oh, wow. How yeah, about that? that. Oh, 10 years. Wow. I was 10 years old. I feel really old yeah. all of a sudden. I'll, I'll fin finish the King uh, thing on this. If he could have a year like Seth Lugo had last year, awesome. I Love think it. that would be that would be great. It's a good blueprint. It is. All right. We will hear from Michael King either in the Scraby Show or in the 5 o'clock hour. We still have some more from the interview this morning. If you want to hear the full interview, go to 97.3thefansd.com and go to the blog. Or you can go to the Odyssey app and go to Ben and Woods and look for that interview. Uh, when we get back, I think we're going to do it. Sammy versus the fans. Oh, okay. I like it. And we're going to try it. So get yeah, in line. 833-288-0973. Take it on Sam when we get back.
97.3 The Fan. Matt Scraby, Sammy Lev here with you. 97.3 The Fan, Gwyn and Chris. Tony Gwynn Jr. on his way. Chris Ello on his way. Oh, actually, Tony just texted me. The traffic was atro- atrocious. He's just getting home, so he is going to join us here shortly. So this is the final segment of the day for Sam Levitt, and we appreciate him for joining us. Wow. <laughs> Are you sad? Do you want to... No, you know what? I'll, I'll... Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, You're being... I have stayed on the last... Uh, last week, I did stay on when Tony and Chris joined. Um, but I think once Tony and or Chris joins, I think I'm going to take advantage That's of, okay. uh, yeah, of having a, a couple of hours here. I, I don't think people understand how difficult it is. And Sam's not going to he's not going to agree with me, but how difficult it is to just jump on broadcast day in and day out and just do your job. Like it, it, some guys jerk is working easy. Sammy to death. I know who is that guy. <laughs> I've been trying yeah. to get Sam some, some rest and that guy won't let him. No, no, it's, it's you, number one, you guys make it pretty easy. And, and honestly, you know, this is one thing where like, th- this is the blessing of, of working in San Diego because we talk so much Padres true. always yeah. that, I always have a very, 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 very good feel for what we're talking about. Like, let's say we worked in a market with four teams, right? Like, uh, I should say, with a, let's say, you know, an NHL team, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, football like team, the four uh, major best. sports. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, then it may be harder. Like, if you don't know what's going on with the uh, we transition the, the NFL into, team, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it may be harder because you're just, yeah. But no, I mean, here here it's kind of easy. All right, Sam. Sam always the modest person. Did you wait show. before we before we get to Sammy versus the fans? Anthony, the YouTube says, "Did you watch Honorage? I did. Anthony has okay, been saying this about me this? for a while. We are yes. blessed to have, and this is this is people have been saying this to me that I see. I it. remind them of Ari Gold. Yes, I see. Do it. I look like Ari a really? little bit, a little bit. Jeremy Piven. I take Ari Gold. That was a good character. Um, Ari Gold in Turtle. <laughs> For this entourage reunion show. I, I personally don't think I look like Turtle. I, got, but... I don't think you do, but I do kind of see it with us two of how you could come to that conclusion. That I'll tell you what, you don't have Turtle's personality. What is Turtle's person? I mean, isn't he a fun loving guy? Know. You think he is? But he's like kind of wild. They're all kind of wild. Well, they're all kind of wild. There was definitely a day where I was living the turtle lifestyle. Yeah, I I don't think I'm I'm not like Ari Gold. Oh, you're you're, def- you're not insulting people in the hallways to get what you want. So you're you're not no, Ari Gold. Um, <laughs> I love that show. I, really, I, I, I do I, too. I, really I do too. It, it's unfortunate that it really didn't end well. I don't think. And then they did that whole movie thing. But yeah, the movie was not great. Um, Turtle I'm S blanking. for sure, Scraby. I'm, I'm blanking. Okay. I'm blank. I'm blanking. Uh, Vince. Um, I'm blanking on what everybody's names are. Vince is the actor. E, yes. E. So who would be um, E at 97.3 The Fan? Who would be Vince? Vince? Ooh, man, we're going to have to name a movie Vince? star in our station. I think we have to go with Tony. He's got to be the most recognizable the name star. on the station. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, Johnny Drama? Drama. Who would be Drama? Oh, gosh. That's, that's, um, that's, that might be me, honestly. <laughs> like you think i don't think so you i'm always think, freaking th- out i'm always like in my feelings johnny drama's always in his feeling his name is <laughs> drama for a reason i need to go watch that show again i do great um, show mike hernandez says woods is vince or drama i'm not sure but brandon 619 said good meeting you today sammy sammy selfies oh. hashtag oh yeah 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 yeah, I did. Uh, I remember the selfie. Nice meeting you too, Brandon. Ben Higgins is E. <laughs> <laughs> I can kind of see that. Ben is his own character. That is for sure. Um, all right. Without further ado, we need to get into it. Actually, I need to read the prize real quick. Woods is 1000% drama, the chat is saying. So we got that established. 
If you beat Sammy in Sammy versus the fans, you are going to be qualified for a grand prize. Two nights stay at Westgate Las Vegas and two tickets to Air Supply with a legacy spanning decades. Air Supply continues to captivate hearts. Now in their 45th anniversary year, the duo continues to play more than 130 shows a year worldwide. Join us in celebrating their music and enduring legacy on May 31st and June 1st, 2024 at the Westgate International Theater at Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. The Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino features newly designed premier rooms, part of their $70 million room renovations, home of legendary Vegas fun. Phone lines are full. Let's go. Wow. Wow. If you had one shot, one opportunity to take down the human almanac himself. Howdy do. Now is your time. Listen to me, this guy is dangerous. Now is your opportunity to win a prize. Well, I hope you know what you're in for. Chris versus the fans starts now on 97.3 The Fan. Unfortunately, I did not have a Sammy versus the fans. All do you right. Think that, do you think that Chris knows the words to this song? to this beat uh yes yes i i know that he does actually okay. because he he is a he's a big fan of this song this eminem song okay. chris is actually more musically inclined than you would think like i would i would guess that chris is better at music than he is pop culture which is very very strange to me uh all right where, where did my sheet of questions go? Here are the rules. You have to make it through three questions. Each question will get more difficult. If you get the question right, you move on. If you get it wrong and Sam gets it right, you're eliminated. But if Sammy gets it wrong, then you move on to the next question or you win. And let's go to our first contestant today. Let's go to Riley. Oh, I got it. I got it. Added. There we go. I thought I had it. Is Riley there? Yeah. Okay. Hello, Riley. Uh, oh, I forgot one one last thing. If you're a first time player, let us know before the first question, and you'll get that for free today. So, with that said, are you ready to go, Riley? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Question number one. What is the name of Kyrie Irving's character from a 2018 movie? Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew is correct. I didn't. I wasn't sure about that question because that's kind of out of sight, out of mind. But good job there. Here we go, Riley. Question number two. Ooh, if you were watching the Super Bowl, you know this. What 49ers player threw a touchdown and caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl? Jawan Jennings. Jawan Jennings is correct. Wow. And that was within wow. the time limit. That was pretty impressive. I may not get to answer a question here. Well, we'll, we'll just clear the questions, wasting time at the end, just to see if you can handle it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Riley, you get this right or Sam gets it wrong, and you are qualified for Las Vegas. All right. They're all baseball questions. Buck Showalter has won Manager of the Year four times, including with the Mets in 2022. Name the other three teams he won with. Uh, uh, geez, I can't even think about it. No answer. Okay, no answer. That's an okay answer because Sam has to get all three of these correct. Sam, do you know the other three teams hmm. Buck Showalter won Manager of the Year for? The other three. I say the Orioles. Okay. The Yankees. Okay. Um, I gotta be careful here. I'm pretty sure I'm right on the first two. Orioles, Yankees, <laughs> um, you got, you got five. Diamondbacks. <laughs> You are the winner today. Did that he manage was good. the Diamondbacks? Am I crazy? You? Yes, I think he did. But oh. you missed the Rangers in 2004. Oh, the Rangers in 04? I never even knew that he was a manager for the you Rangers. You know what? Wow. You know what? I, I thought it would be the Diamondbacks. Like, they had 99, 100, they won 100 games. 
Wow, the wasn't. Rangers. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. He's won it four times with four different teams. I can't tell if that means that he's a bad coach Man. or if he because he's with so many teams or if he's just a brilliant coach and can coach anywhere. Sam, are you? Wow. He's upset that this game ended early. Well, no, that was that's a tough. You know, that's a tough question, but it's doable. I would have not guessed the Rangers. I wouldn't have. I, to be honest with you, Diamondback. It was Yankees, Orioles, and Diamondbacks in my head the whole way. And um, I'm I was like pretty confident that I was gonna get it like, because because I I thought it was it was pre um because he managed in Arizona pre Brenly and they were good before they won the World Series so I was like oh I bet it's Arizona expansion team if if I'm not you know mistaken, like I believe each of those teams went to the World Series after Buck left. <laughs> <laughs> not the well, Orioles. Hold, not the Orioles. Well, let me see. Mets, so, right? so the so yeah, well, you're right, Adam. The Yankees in '96 went. The Diamondbacks in '01 went. Uh, the Rangers with Ron 07. Washington. Yeah. Okay. So, so that was one that of their, was the Rangers went, I think, in 07 and 11. They they went, they played against the Giants in 2010 and then they won it. Yeah. Or no, they didn't the, win it. They played so against not the Orioles. Not the Orioles. Um, but um, and then we'll see with the Mets this year. But um, interesting. Wow. Come on. Wow. Huh. Uh, let me give you another question while we okay have you for just a couple more minutes. Sure. Who holds the record for most RBIs as a catcher in baseball history? Um, RBIs as a catcher in RBIs baseball catcher. history. Yeah. Hmm. Welsh Fryer says, "Hey, we need to hire Buck Walter then fire him." And I'm not, I'm not, I don't even have the the your screen pulled no, up, so if people no. are commenting, I don't, I don't see it. Um, and by the way, I mean scream like the streaming yeah. where you can see the comment. People are, yeah, up, people are blaming you for um, cheating or something. No, um, RBIs is a catcher. Let me just tell wow, you, this is tough. a legendary. Name. No, don't. Yeah, well, I, it has to be a legendary name. Um. I want to say it actually may relate to our last um, subject, Buck Showalter, because he probably managed him. Is it Pudge? It is not Pudge. Uh, <laughs> He's like, RBIs I... is a catcher. Is it? <sighs> I think you're thinking too recent. Too recent? Oh. Um, is it Yogi Berra? Correct. Yogi Bear oh, wow. is correct. Okay. I thought you were gonna wow. name like okay. Spikes. Yeah, McGillicuddy Yogi played for a long time. <laughs> okay, yeah, I wasn't thinking far back enough. Uh Pudge was a good offensive catcher. I wonder how many he ended up with. Um Pudge he was Rodriguez. Also a great defensive catcher as well. Yeah. Can I just jump in and reiterate um, for a second how great Welsh Friars' comment was? We yes. need to hire Buck Walter yes. and fire him. Absolutely need to. That was a spot on comment, and uh, just keep. We shouldn't like, right over there. That. No, we need to. We need to bring yeah. it back Pia- because it was Piazza such a good would comment. have been a good guest too, but Piazza was is home runs. Um, I knew that if you would have asked home runs, Benito catcher, Santiago. <laughs> no, <laughs> he um, laughs as he says it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pudge Carlton had, Fisk, I maybe would have guessed. But... Pudge had 1,300, 1,332, and Yogi Berra had like 1,600 or something like that. But Okay, all right. So Pudge was not a terrible guess. Yeah, um, yeah. not a terrible Carlton guess at all. Fisk. Yogi Berra had, um, he had 1,430. So there you go. Hmm. All, right. all right. Thank you so much, Sam, for filling in for the guys. They are going to be on the next segment, most likely. And oh, wow. I appreciate you staying here with me and keeping me company talking Padres all that good stuff oh my pleasure always great to be with you Scraby keep up the fantastic work keep up the fantastic work with the Scraby show thank you it's award winning I understand so it, it, congratulations it's award winning I need to find out which yes. award I won but... I don't know I don't know what awards it won but it won some awards to me that's okay. what I keep telling everybody uh, all right uh, Gonzo says great show by the way boys very entertaining <laughs> oh Gonzo that's, oh, that's my your guy. guy that is your hey. guy Wait, 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 before I go, Gonzo, and I'm talking directly to our listener, Gonzo, <laughs> tell me, tell me that you saw the video that your friend asked me to make you like a week ago in Peoria, giving tell you a him. shout out. Tell I him a, I did a, chat. I did a whole video for Gonzo, so Gonzo, I want to, 
I want to oh. know that you saw the video. Oh, so there, there, there is a connection it. being made here, or yeah, already. Gonzo made. and Ob, come on, Gonzo and Ob. Yeah, I have heard him call it. He said, he said he he saw the video. There we so. go. He saw it. Great. All right, thank you, Sam. We will right, talk bye, to you Scraby. very soon on the other side. Okay, We're going to catch up with Gwen and Chris. Try to get them on. So stick with us here. But first, check your traffic on the way home. From the ninety-seven-three, the.